Okay, the result in this video is going to help us out in solving or showing the non-central chi-square distribution, the general non-central chi-square. In an earlier video, I showed it. I showed uh, how to calculate a non-central chi-square distribution with one degree of freedom and non-centrality parameter lambda. But this result is going to help us show the general result. And in general, we're going to show that the sum of these yi squareds follows a non-central chi-square distribution and where each yi is, is normal mu i1. But we're going to use this pretty fascinating result that we can really use these yi squareds and we can break them into the first yi squared and then sum the rest where this y is a normal a square to lambda 1 where lambda is the sum of the mu i squareds from here and then this is a uh, sum of y i squareds from normal 0 1 variables and why that's important in an earlier video, video we showed that's the non-central chi squared with one degree of freedom and non-centrality parameter lambda and this is the sum of chi-square distribution, central chi-square distribution, so this becomes a chi-square distribution again with k minus 1 degrees of freedom. Okay, so let's start. Let's define A to be an orthogonal matrix, but it's going to be a very specific orthogonal matrix. Here are X's, XI's, defined above. In our orthogonal matrix, the first row of it is going to be mu1 over the square root of lambda. And lambda was defined to be the sum of the mu i squared. Second column is mu 2 over square root of lambda. Da, 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 da. The kth column is mu k over lambda k. Now these rows aren't needed specifically, or you know the specific values aren't needed in this result, but we do need the fact that this is orthogonal. So any two rows multiplied together, we will get zero. That's the definition of orthogonality. And then we're going to let a mu vector be the means from defined above. And we're going to let y equal uh, a, the transformation ax. Now, we you know in from distributional theory that the y is 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 also normal with a mean a mu and a variance a i a transpose but this reduces to just the identity matrix and the mean stays the same so and that's a result from the orthogonality of a anything times the identity matrix is it's you get the other matrix back which is this but one of the properties of orthogonality is that the transpose of that vector ends up being the inverse of that vector, so you get i. And that's what this is. And notice the variance-covariance matrix is diagonal, so each of the yi's are independent. So now let's specifically look at the mean of the first yi. So this is a vector y1, y2, da 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 da, yk, and we're going to look at the first one. And to get that is you take the first row of a, a1, and multiply it times the x vector. And, and this is the uh, notation to do that. Now we bring in the expectation through the sum in this. Now the x, the expected value of the x size is just mu i. It's the mean. So we get this. But for row 1, we have a, a specific row. We know the values. And that's the mu i over the square root of lambda. That is the i. And then we keep the mu i the same. Well, these are the same values, so you can square them. Mu i squared over the square root of lambda. We can bring out the lambda because it's constant, and then 
we're left with the sum of the mu i squares. But that's what we defined as lambda. So you have lambda over the square root of lambda, and those can be simplified just to the square root of lambda. So now let's move on. Now note, this I think will help in our calculations uh, next. Note, because A is orthogonal, any two rows multiplied together is zero. For example, if we multiply row I and row K, and row K doesn't mean the last one, it just means any row where I and K are not equal. So we take the ith row and the kth row and multiply them, we get zero. That's by definition of the orthogonality of A. So now let's look at, a, at another example. Let's take row 1 and multiply it by any row called K. That doesn't have to be the last one in our matrix. We know that it's going to be 0, because when you multiply any two rows together, you get 0. So we take row 1 and row K, multiply them, and then we plug in the values for A1, and, and that's this, and multiply. This is a constant factor, so we bring it out, and we have this result. Now this, the square root of lambda is, is a positive, it's a non-zero value. So this summation is zero. So we take any row times the mean vector, we get zero. Okay. So that is going to help us when we look at the mean of any other yi. So i not equal to 1. We're not looking at the first element of the y vector, any other. So the expected value of the ith row, you know, is this. That's how we define yi. Now we bring the expectation in, and so this is going to be mu j, because that's xj. So we get the sum of that row times mu j, but that's zero from what we just did before. So the mean of the, all the other yi's are zero. So what that says, our original assumptions are true. The xi's are still normal mu i1. The first element, y1, was a normal square root of lambda 1. And all the other yi's are normal 0, 1 vector. So our assumptions are true before we, we get to the main result here. And if we look at this sum, which is what we were interested in, it to write it in matrix form is x transpose x. Now we put in what we know about x. That is the b inverse y. You know, that, that transpose is there. And then x here is b inverse y. But remember, b inverse for an orthogonal matrix is just b transpose. So we write those as B transpose. And here we distribute this transpose into the parentheses, but then you have to reverse the matrices. So that's Y transpose, B transpose, transpose. And these transpose cancel, or you know, to just get B back. But B, B transpose, those are inverse matrices of each other, so you get I. And I times anything, you get the anything back. So, we get this result. That this, that the sum of the X's is really the sum of the Y I squared. The sum of the X squared, Y I squared. So then, in this sum, we can pull out the first one. And then we can still add from 2 to K of the other Y I squareds. And this is the result that we were showing. So if we let u be this and v be this variable, then we know that the, they're independent because the, the identity matrix, or I mean the covariance covariance matrix of the y's was the identity matrix. Um, each yi is going to be chi squared 1. So the sum of those is chi squared k minus 1. And in another video, we showed that y1 squared is a non-central chi squared. So this result is, is going to be uh, 
pretty important when we drive the general non-central chi-squared. We're, we're going to model it from these two variables, which is equivalent to modeling it from this. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you.